Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there this morning and having a fantastic start to your day. Great week out there so far. Here to give you some update and information on what's going to happen weather-wise for your Tuesday. A big topic in this morning's video obviously is going to be the severe weather potential across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. We'll speak heavily on that. Have a separate segment for that for you folks that live in like Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, lower Michigan, even all the way down to Kentucky, even into Ohio, even areas of like southern Wisconsin could get some severe weather today. We'll talk about the a snow threat across areas of the country also, a little bit of winter weather that eventually will drift into the Great Lakes region. We'll speak heavily on that. I'll break it all down for you folks for the entire lower 48, just like we always do in these morning videos. Not going to really have a segment after today's, like the next 24-hour period of this forecast uh, video. Not, not really going to speak on after that. Uh, just because uh, we really just want to focus in on what's going to happen for today just because it's going to be a pretty active day out there and night. Um, but stay tuned for the later videos. I won't have a video this evening just because we have a soccer practice for tonight. So, you know, I have two hours of soccer and by the time I get home, it's almost eight o'clock. And I think most of you know that I go to sleep pretty early and definitely not going to start a video at around eight to eight thirty and then it drop at around 9 30 10 o'clock so we'll not have a video this evening but of course we'll get back to things for tomorrow and start focusing in on the next storm we are watching which is going to start here in the next 24 to 48 hours and then has the potential to be significant as we are kind of rounding off february and getting into the first few days of march we spoke a little bit on that in yesterday evening's video check that out if you do want information on that not a whole lot has changed the setup looks about the same, but we are still watching model guidance come in come in, and just trying to get a better idea on what's going to happen early next week. So with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below so I can do that and so others can do so too. So let's get rocking and rolling. We got some rain flying around across areas of the Mid-South, even the Deep South, a little bit of rain shower activity, even kind of cruising through the Carolinas, areas of Virginia, some heavier rain, even some storms in Kentucky this morning, a little bit of light snow in northern Maine, and then we have this stripe of moderate to even heavy snow kind of surging through North Dakota, even extending all the way back into western South Dakota and areas of the northern plains back here in southeast Wyoming. Gusty winds, gusty winds were associated with this too, even some brief blizzard conditions of some of these snow squalls. Uh, it's going to be like snow squalls, like blizzard conditions with this cold front continuing to sag across areas of the country. The, the temperature gradient today, guys, is going to be phenomenal to actually just look at. I mean, areas will surge into the 80s ahead of this cold front, and then once the cold front moves uh, through, temperatures will dramatically drop off in the middle of the country, depending on where you are. Right at the end of the video, we will talk about temperatures and exactly what I mean when I speak on that. But Snow will continue to fly around across areas of northern Minnesota. It's adding up out there this morning and will continue throughout the morning and early afternoon hours. And we will eventually see this cold front make its way into the Great Lakes region. And we will get some winter weather into the UP of Michigan, even northern lower Michigan. Even a little bit of snow is possible in Wisconsin, Iowa. Some like traced uh, dusting amounts is certainly possible out there. Still uh, somewhat active out west, but not near as active as what we've seen over the last few days. So... Still some bursts of snow, you know, out and about out there. Storm Prediction Center. We'll talk about this right now. There is a large slight risk. Guys, I'm doing this video as of around uh, 7-ish a.m. Eastern time. They do another update around 8.30 or 9. Could this get bumped up to an enhanced risk? It absolutely could. Right now, we got a pretty large slight risk. Level 2 out of 5 for this entire yellow area. There's a marginal risk in the dark green that basically covers up um, everywhere around that area, which is a level one out of five risk. <clears throat> but right now, we really are focusing in on those areas that are in that yellow area, which is that slight risk. 5% risk of a tornado. This has actually gotten larger since last night's video, covering up the entire state of Indiana, all of western Ohio, extreme southern sections of lower Michigan. A good, a good chunk of basically Illinois, Chicago, all the way down to pretty much covering all of southern Illinois and a very small section of Missouri. There's a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any given location out here. Wind threat, you got a 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour within 25 miles in any given location in this entire yellow area right here. And then the hell threat will most likely be the biggest threat today. Um, we have not only in the yellow area a 15% risk of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger, but if you look right here, the black outline region, that is also 
a 10% chance of significant hail, which means there's a 10% chance of hail exceeding two inch in diameter or larger in this black outlined region right here with the black dashes going in between it. So hail will be a big thing today with what we call an elevated mixed layer kind of riding over this area where we have a bunch of dry and cold air kind of riding in the upper levels of the atmosphere, kind of up top of surface temperatures that are relatively warm for this time of the year in this area, at least for today before this cold front surges in. Flooding risk, just a marginal threat of flooding, at least a 5% chance of flash flood guidance being met, but flooding won't be a big deal today. Watches, warnings, and advisories, a lot of wind advisories in this tan color. Even in this brown color up here, we have high wind watches, so it's going to get quite windy in the northeast here in the next day or so. We got winter weather advisories for with the snow that's flying around across the northern plains, north central U.S. Several counties have been upgraded from winter weather advisories to winter storm warnings now in northern Minnesota and also counties in eastern sections of North Dakota. Winter storm warnings continue for the central and northern Rockies, and we have winter storm watches up the Sierra Nevada, Northern California, the Oregon Cascades, winter storm warnings up for the Washington Cascades of what's going on right now up here, but what's to come a little bit further south into this area. So there's a lot going on, especially into the western and central U.S. for today. So we take a look at the southeast. We do have that storm activity in Kentucky, especially this morning. This energy will kind of surge into the Appalachian Mountains. It'll be quite rainy later on this morning across the mountainous regions of West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, this will continue to trail off to the east. And then by the time we are getting into this afternoon, we'll get some rain showers east of the Apps in the North Carolina, Virginia, even some showers possible all the way into Washington, D.C., Baltimore. Then we get later on this afternoon to this evening. More showers could develop in Virginia up here, up here into the Delmarva region. And then we get into the overnight hours. This is when we watch this line of storms that could be strong and severe. They get going here in the Ohio Valley, and then they will turn into an all-out line of storms, which we will zoom in uh, to for you folks in Kentucky and Kentucky and sweep through the state of Kentucky, even extending all the way down into Tennessee. But I think more of a severe element will be up here in Kentucky, even southern Ohio, as we are waking up tomorrow morning. We'll zoom into that here in a second. The northeast today... Quiet right now, but we'll start to get some heavier rains that will develop in western PA, kind of move out of Ohio. So rain will begin to fall in areas of western New York State, southern tier Finger Lakes region around Buffalo. Some rain will fall this afternoon. This rain will make it all the way to New York City by the time we get into this evening. Maybe a rainy rush hour, uh, rain overspreading New Jersey to Delmarva region, rain falling across northern West Virginia, maybe in the form of maybe some heavier burst of rain. By the time we get into the overnight hours, this rain will make it all the way into southern New England. Just good old-fashioned rain in Vermont and New Hampshire. It's not cold enough for snow, even in the higher elevations. And then, eventually, as we're getting into after midnight, we could get some storms that makes its, makes its way into Pennsylvania, even into the southern tier of New York. I think it'll be more so rain. But look at these storms overnight in northern West Virginia, southern Ohio. Way after midnight tonight, to the wee hours of the morning, we could get some storms. They get going, and they could produce hell, some gusty winds. So getting into the overnight hours, if you live around Pittsburgh Point South into northern sections of West Virginia, don't be surprised to get some storms later on tonight and just widespread rains waking up to your Wednesday morning out here. Rainfall between now and let's take it all the way to Thursday morning. You know, the northern half of West Virginia is going to get a good inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches of rain, depending on where you are. Um, and then there's a favorite area here in western PA, inch, inch and a half. And then there's certain areas just across the entire state of Pennsylvania, even Maryland. A good washout over the next 48 hours. Southern New England could get enhanced rain, even the down east areas of Maine, where you could get two to three inches of rain in this setup. Not really any snow at all over the next 48 hours in this region. That could change after we get past this. South central U.S., quiet, record-breaking temperatures. It was a town in Texas that hit 100 degrees. I think it was... At Keeling, Keeling, Texas. I'm sure someone will correct me. Mary, let me know. I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, but sometimes I overthink pronouncing the names and I just butcher them when they're a lot easier to say than what I try to make it out to be. But uh, anyways, another warm day across these areas. Not quite as warm as yesterday, but another warm day. This afternoon, not a whole lot going on. And then we start to get into this evening. A round of light to moderate snow could sweep across the northern counties associated with this cold front of Kansas. It could warm pretty good up into Kansas today, and then by the time you get into this evening, it could be snowing 
and then some snow can make it all the way. Maybe a little bit of winter weather like in Kansas City, but especially north around the snow uh, will make its way uh, through northern Missouri, even sections of Iowa into the overnight hours. And then we could just get a little slither of snow kind of making its way through the heart of Missouri overnight. And then we take it all the way into Wednesday morning. And this cold front's made its, all, made its way all the way into northern Texas at this point. A little bit of snow could happen. Maybe a dusting of snow is picking up on a few tenths of an inch of snow here in northern and northeast sections of Kansas. And maybe someone can sneak in a half an inch of snow in northern Missouri. But not a lot uh, showing from this. But don't be surprised you get a dusting. A lot of warm air ahead of this system. So I think you got to get it to snow pretty hard for it to really accumulate. Now, Snow up here in the Dakotas, northern Minnesota. There's that heavy snow flying around right now. This will continue. We start to get, we will talk about the severe weather threat that you're about to see pop up down here here in a second. Let's just focus on the snow really quick, and then we'll get to the severe weather side. But we see the snow continuing to fly around here in northern sections of Minnesota. Still some light snow and even moderate snow flying around back here. Maybe even as far south as Nebraska, South Dakota. And we keep this going, and then another area of snow will develop along this cold front. This could, you know, drop some very light accumulations across central Minnesota later on this afternoon. And then this will move even through Minneapolis and eventually make its way into western and northwestern sections of Wisconsin, Duluth. We'll start to see some snow. And there's that low right there. You see it is dry for the most part. Some storms starting to form around it. And uh, we kind of keep this going. Let's just focus on the snow right now. And then there's that round of snow to the south. It could be attached right here. And this is when the snow, listen, this snow could be pretty heavy up here. Very convective in nature. Um, a dynamic system for sure. Very compact dynamic system. It's going to bring some wild weather for the Great Lakes region. In fact, some local National Weather Service really discussed how dynamic the weather is going to be. Um, but here it comes. You know, we're getting into the middle of the night. It's around midnight tonight. We got snow flying around. Um, in eastern sections of Iowa, right? And then we are starting to get into like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, some snow uh, flying around in Green Bay, almost all of the UP of Michigan. Michigan. It's storming, it looks like, in the eastern UP, but then the cold air is moving in, and right when that surface low flies through, all of a sudden it's snowing. By the time we're waking up Wednesday morning, snow is flying around across the entire UP just about, and then this cold air kind of filters over the Great Lakes region. And then we get the lake effect snows that start whipping pretty much all day tomorrow across the eastern UP, all of lower Michigan, into southern Ontario for a several hour period, an extended period, probably at least 24 hours, some lake effect snow will get going. So snowfall between now and the next 48 hours, several inches of snow will add up, especially closer to uh, the shorelines of uh, Lake um, Superior. Several inches of snow into here into here but i'll kind of zoom into this region here in a second but you know even green bay could get an inch of snow and what's wild is chicago has a severe weather threat today but by the time this system pulls in and an area of snow moves in you could have severe weather and then a half inch of snow right behind it it's pretty wild it has dusting amounts across iowa northern missouri northern illinois um so we'll see what happens very a very dynamic storm system guys i really can't say that enough pretty wild stuff you know, just taking a closer look at this, there's the eastern UP, and there's some of those um, towns, Whitefish Point, four to eight inches of snow. Was that Nobbin Way? Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Two to five inches of snow. Beaver Island, two to four inches. Traverse City, uh, th uh, two to five inches of snow. So definitely some snow um, after, you know, some pretty warm days that you've dealt with. So let's talk about the severe weather threat. All right, we'll start off. You're confused about the time frame. This is in Eastern time. So what we're looking at here, this is Central time, but this is showing up in Eastern time. So back this up one hour. So it's, this is 4 p.m. There's not a whole lot going on, right? You're thinking, where's the severe weather everybody's talking about? There it is. You see it. There's a surface low right in here. That there's not an L showing up, but there's a low pressure right in here. You see this little itty bitty area of storms? Watch what happens as it kind of rapidly explodes and gets going here. Uh, this is around 6 p.m. Then bang, storms get going right around Rockford. These are the storms you really watch out for, guys, for a tornado threat. This is what we call a triple point coming up here, basically where you have your best overlapping kinematics and thermodynamics and lift. Because the surface low is right here. That's where you're going to have the best lift. And you're going to have some very fast storm motion, typically right up against the surface low. And these storms need to be watched out. You need to, you need to watch out for them is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Get my words all twisted up. I'm telling you, watch out for these storms. They could outrun the favorable environment for tornadoes, but 
for about a one to three hour period, these storms can produce a tornado. Okay, these fire up probably before the sun sets. So, you know, you'll kind of see them, but they'll kind of keep going after the sun does set. All right, and then they these storms ride over the southern areas of Lake Michigan. These storms will have the capability of producing hail too, large hail. Will they hit Chicago? Of course, this is just a short range model. It's not going to be exact, but two things are ongoing right now. You got these nasty storms between Chicago and Milwaukee. Maybe they're on top of these areas. And then we got this area of storms that's starting to develop in the northern counties of Indiana and then southwest Michigan. And all these had the chance to produce a tornado and very large hail, damaging winds, of course. But what you've noticed down here is there's storms firing off down here into southeast Missouri, southern sections of Illinois, southern Indiana. These have the capability, guys, to also produce a tornado. We don't want to just ignore uh, the tornado threat down here, too. There's a reason why the Storm Prediction Center has a pretty large tornado risk right here in the 5%, all the way down to here, all the way up into here. You know, I definitely, if you watched yesterday evening's video, I focused a lot on the tornado threat up here. But we'll have to see what actually happens with this. But you kind of keep this going. And this is as far out as the short range HRRR model goes. But we have some storms making their way, um, even maybe into, even into Detroit and Northwest Ohio. This is around 10 p.m., well after the sun setting. And I'm telling you, these storms will have a lot of cold air aloft to work with, a lot of cold air in the upper levels of the atmosphere with a very cold air mass trailing behind all this energy. So these storms will easily produce large hail, guys. I'm telling you, if not large, at least um, a lot of small hail. So please be aware of this. And look at these storms down here. Look at these storms kind of uh, exploding down here in southern sections of Indiana. And I know if you're in central Indiana, central Illinois, you're thinking, oh, where's the storms for us? there's going to be a lot of areas that don't get a drop of rain in this. There's a lack of lift, but whoever does get hit, is going to get hit good. But there's going to be a group of people that's probably going to say, yeah, they were calling for storms and we didn't get anything. Them guys are never right. Well, just keep in mind <laughs> um, that just because they're calling for storms, you might not get anything. I mean, that happens a lot, guys. Um, just like there's when there's a 60% chance of thunderstorms in the summer, you know, it might be storming like crazy at your cousin's house right down the road, five minutes up the road. But where you're at, it's sunshine, it's hot, and humid as all get out. That's just the way it is. And this isn't a summer type setup, but it's going to be kind of similar where not everybody's going to see storms. We take a look at the ex extended portion of this. We'll have to go back to the 06Z HRRR model. This goes past 18 hours. All right, same kind of evolution. But I'm telling you, you know, this is around midnight, guys. Look at these storms cruising through central Lower Michigan, guys, these are areas that will get snow six hours after, <clears throat> excuse me, six hours after these storms, <clears throat> can't talk, uh, move through. But look at these storms. These look like individuals, like almost supercells down here near Louisville, Cincinnati, down the Dayton. Watch out for these storms. And if we keep this going, it starts to develop into a line of storms. We'll kind of take a closer look at this too. But look at these storms kind of starting to move into Kentucky. We got to watch out for these. Some embedded tornadoes are very possible. But check out the snow that filters in behind this. Like, look, look at the timing of this. Pretty wild, right? You watch this cluster of storms that could have the chance to produce a tornado. It's very possible. These two. Look at these storms. Regardless, these will be some pretty powerful storms that kind of move through um, northern um, sections of Illinois. As soon as these storms pull out, snow pulls in before the sun even comes up. Look at this snow kind of making its way through the area. So pretty wild stuff, guys. You look at the updraft felicity swath from this. Of course, it really likes this area. You see the highlighted colors. This doesn't mean there's a 10 out of 10 chance for a tornado. It just means that this run of the h triple oil model likes the best rotation with these storms. And I like that area, too, for the best chance to see a tornado. And then you kind of keep this going. You see this highlighted area getting going down here, and we'll have to kind of go back to this. And uh, no, come on, work with me here. Work with me. We're low on time. And there it is. There's that those kind of areas right in here. Now you see this one streak. This is for what's going on. But all this stuff right in here, kind of going the opposite direction. This is the capability for some of these to storm storms to spin later on this this evening into the overnight hours in southern Illinois, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, even into sections of northern Kentucky, even the Boot Hill, Missouri. We can't ignore Missouri. So we briefly will talk about this one more time. The reason I'm watching this area right in here is because this is what we call a triple point. Best overlapping of dynamics of ingredients is what I meant. 
and we get into this evening, look how the dew points surge into the upper 50s, low 60s, right around Chicago. you got to watch this area right into here. And then all of a sudden, dry air moves in and stabilizes the atmosphere. In response to that surge of low-level moisture right into this area, you can see like the comet head, right? Look at the Cape values that spike into this area. Okay, we kind of keep it going. We're getting this afternoon. We're starting to get to late afternoon this evening. Look at the Cape levels around 6, 7 p.m. here in the northern counties of Illinois. I mean, look at even Chicago. Now, just because you have higher levels of Cape, there could be a, a, a layer in the low levels of the atmosphere that really stabilizes the atmosphere. It's very possible. But certainly going to be ingredients. Look at these Cape. I mean, this is increased from what we talked about last night with this. Cape levels over 2,000, almost 2,500 joules per kilogram mixed layer Cape, guys. This is some high-end Cape. So there's going to be some juice for these storms to work with. So, you know, you look, click at a random sounding here in northern Illinois, and it has a tornado hazard type, a looping hodograph. Um, but if you look right here, it looks like some warm air just above the surface. This could help stabilize the atmosphere. We'll see what happens with that. But certainly need to watch out for tornadoes right around that area. And then we look at the extended version of this. And we look at how these storms kind of make their way through Kentucky. This is getting into tomorrow morning. These storms are making their way <clears throat> through Kentucky. Tennessee. I mean, even look at these storms. You can't ignore these storms moving into West Virginia also. You guys are probably going to be woken up with some loud noises from that, some nasty storms in West Virginia for sure tomorrow morning. Definitely be aware of that. But I do think these things lose some steam somewhat as we are getting into tomorrow morning. But they could re kind of get themselves back together as they head towards the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina. And they will probably bring some gusty winds with them too. We kind of take this all the way into our Wednesday afternoon. And look at this thin line of storms trying to survive all the way into the Carolinas. So, out west, stay safe out there. Stay safe out there in the uh, Midwest and Ohio Valley. Snow flying around the central and northern Rockies. Um, snow will continue to fly around. Could have some more snow squalls kind of get going here in the northern Rockies right up into here. We'll add some light snowfall accumulations. Uh, but this will kind of taper off. The big storyline is the snow that will continue to fall pretty heavily up here in the Cascades, the Olympic Mountains. Rain in the lower elevations uh, it definitely kind of warms back up. So definitely not as much snow in those lower elevations that we've just seen. So we will continue just to see a lot of snow pile up up here. We're getting starting to get all the way into Wednesday morning. Some of the snow will start to break loose into the northern Rockies of Idaho, Montana. And then this system even gets even warmer. And as you can tell, even the Olympic Mountains are trying to struggle to just see rain. But another cold system is going to move in. A little bit colder of a system. But... Yeah, just a continuous feed of moisture into the Pacific Northwest, and then eventually this starts to ooze a little bit further south. But snowfall from this between now and Thursday morning, feet of snow in the Cascades, Olympic Mountains, even a little snow in the coastal range. Um, yeah, the snow's really going to add up in this area. So, um, I mean, it just depends on your elevation. I always say that, guys. Um, has I'm wondering, has Seattle really seen a snow event? I know you guys see, what, one to two events a year at least. I don't even think Seattle's really seen a snow event this year, so it's been kind of quiet up there. I know, obviously, the valley towns and cities of Oregon saw that nasty ice storm and winter weather event back in January. But anyways, guys, uh, definitely a hefty event on the way. Temperatures will be wild today, guys. Um, area of moisture will keep things pretty cool across the Apps regions, the mid-Atlantic. It'll warm up pretty nicely in the southeast, though, deep south, 70s and 80s. Um, someone will probably hit 90 degrees in Arkansas and Missouri today warm all the way up into the Midwest, guys. I mean, folks, it, it'll get all the way up into the 60s, into the UP of Michigan. I think Minneapolis broke, I think, an all-time February record high yesterday of like 65. Um, very warm in the entire lower Michigan, 60s and 70s in lower Michigan today, guys. Wild stuff, folks. Look at this powerful cold front coming. It doesn't take, you know, a genius to know where this cold front is, right? Temperatures will get into the 90s. Someone will probably hit over 100 degrees in South Texas again today. Warm up again, up all the way into the Delmarva. And then, man, it's getting cold, especially in the central and northern Rockies. Look, you're locked into the tundra in the Dakotas today. Uh, Montana, Wyoming, well below freezing. Uh, winter kind of reminding us that it's still winter. Um, the southwest, 60s and 70s, still pretty warm. The the real super cold air didn't really ever get to you guys, but we'll see if it tries to get down through you folks here over the next day or so. But this is the wild stuff, guys. You look at this cold front today. Look how the temperatures warm up. Like, for example, there's going to be probably a period today, this afternoon, where 
one corner of the state of Kansas is uh, below freezing, and then the southeast corner is getting into the low 80s. Look at these temperatures surging into Oklahoma, and check out the cold front that moves in later this evening. Just dives in, and we start to get temperatures that are going to get well below zero tonight and to areas of the northern plains, north central U.S. and the upper Midwest. So this is a pretty powerful cold front, guys. I mean, this thing is all the way down to the Mid-South by the time we're into tomorrow morning. So waking up to, um, you're kind of getting into this afternoon, temperatures in the 60s and 70s in these areas that will get a severe weather threat today. By the time you're waking up tomorrow morning, teen, temperatures will be in the teens to the 20s. So uh, definitely what we call a dynamic event, that's for sure. That's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. and You folks have a great and, more importantly, a safe Tuesday. Talk to you later.